Alrighty, in today's video we're going to talk about making double-sided circuit boards like this one. And this is just a demo board with some NE555s and LEDs on it. This series, this mini-series, is a spin-off from my Z80 computer series, where we talked in the last video about making double-sided circuit boards to put into cartridge connectors. And these cartridge connectors work by connecting to the edge of PCB on both sides. So we need to make double-sided circuit boards. This is a single-sided blank, but you get the idea. So for making double-sided circuit boards, there is a lot of ways. And I'll start with the easiest, which I've done before, but it's not all that great. And that is, you just do double-sided toner transfer. You put your transfer for paper with your toner on one side, you iron it on, then you turn it around, align the second bit, for the top or bottom layer, depending on where you started. Very carefully. And then you iron on this, and then you go into etching. <clears throat> this is very hard to do. To align it properly, very hard. Then you iron it on, it always moves a little, and then you misalign just a bit, and it's really annoying. And it ruins all your vias, and it's terrible. So we're not going to do that. The next option, which is really easy, and... Um, it works really well, is to buy boards like this. This is also single-sided, but this is a pre-coated photosensitized board. This has plastic film on it, and once you peel this off, you have a photosensitized layer that you can then expose with your mask, uh, develop it, and then etch it. Problem is, if you compare the price, these circuit boards to these, then you notice that these are an order of magnitude less expensive than these. And these are single-sided. For double-sided, it gets even worse. So this is really no option. Um, this would be nice, but it's really no option. So next method that a lot of people use is called dry film photoresist. And what you do is you get a roll of this, which is... Uh, dry film, and it comes on a roll like this. You should ideally store it uh, in a light-proof container, but it's not too bad if it's exposed to light for a little while. And what this is, is basically it's a sandwich of a dry film photoresist type material in between two layers of plastic. And what you do is you cut off a little bit of this. You just pack this and put it over by the side. You would cut a little bit of this off. And then you'd peel off one layer. Which I actually did off camera before. But it's already sticking to the other layer again. So you peel two of the layers apart, which is already an exercise in keeping your blood pressure low. And once you have them apart, you would take your circuit board blank and you'd stick this on like so. Then you would iron it on or laminate it on and then you'd carefully pull off the other uh, piece of plastic, which in my experience also very hard, doesn't work, very frustrating, all of that. Don't want to do dry film. Dry film is, in my experience, awful. So that brings us to the last option, which is so-called wet film photoresist. What you can do is you can get yourself some wet film photoresist material. And this is just what I bought. It's a uh, hundred grams of um, photoresist and it came in a leaky package which is a little bit annoying but what this is is basically a photoresistive paint and we're going to talk about how you use this in a minute what you need to do is you somehow need to get this wet photoresist film onto this board and there is a couple options on doing that some people just paint it on with a brush 
which uh, doesn't really work all that well. I tried that once. Um, that wasn't great. Some people uh, dilute it down and do sort of a dip coat where they dip it in and then they pull it out slowly and it dries and that sort of works, I think. Um, but for small circuit boards, a really good option is just to not dilute it and use a spin coater to spin the photoresist film onto the circuit boards. And for this, I build a very, very crude spin coater. And there's uh, much nicer spin coaters out there. But this is what I have here. And what this is, is basically just an RC um, brushless motor mounted to this platter here inside this printed shell. And then it just goes out to, the power goes out to these two power pins here. And it has a potentiometer and a smallish Arduino and an, an electronic speed controller also from an RC website. And if you Google spin coater and DIY spin coater, there's much, 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 much nicer instructions on building one of these than I could ever give you here. So just take this. This is my crude spin coater. It works. It's fine. I'm not going to tell you how to build one yourself. Uh, you can find that out. Um, on the internet. So I'll just connect this up and we'll see how the circuit board uh, coating works. Alright, here we are with the spin coater now connected and you can see if I turn this knob it starts spinning up and this is only at about 10%. It will get very 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 fast if you turn this all the way up which we really don't need for this application. So to spin code a board, I would take a circuit board blank like this and I'd drill a hole in the middle or if it's a smaller board, I'll just stick it on the platter somewhere. Then I'll, f um, I'll fix it to this shaft or to the platter and then I'll just drop a little bit of photoresist on there and spin it up. The important thing is I'll do this with um, a heavy iron lid on here because what you really, really don't want is the thing somehow getting loose. It, it's very, it's rotating very fast. It uh, could easily cause some damage, which you don't want to. Um, so I'll just get a prepared circuit board blank and we'll spin coat some circuit boards. We've got our circuit board blank prepared, cleaned and mounted to the shaft in the middle. And it's very important that you drill this hole in the center. So go from edge to edge, um, mark this on there, mark this on there, take a center punch, punch out the center and then drill out the hole. You don't want any imbalance in this because at the sort of speeds this is going. This is very, very scary already. It's going to go a little faster, although we're going to have the lid on there. This is just to show uh, what it looks like. You also definitely don't want to stick your finger in there while it's running. Also, that's why the lid is on there. So, you take a little bit of your compound, and I'm just using a little spatula here to just liberally spread some of this on there. And it's not important that you cover the whole surface because it's going to spin off to the sides. Um, anyway, what you really want to do is you want to cover the center with about the same amount of compound anyway. Because it's not going to spin towards the middle, it's going to, all of it is going to um, go outward. So Then you're going to uh, put this somewhere. All of this can be done under uh, reasonable lighting. You sh probably shouldn't put some studio lights on there. But the sort of lights I'm filming under, perfectly fine. Then I'm putting my lid on here. And I'm going to spin this up. To a reasonably high speed. And I'm just doing this by eye. It would probably be nicer to have 
um, a speed controller on there. But for the sort of application I'm going for, this is pretty much fine. So let's just see how this worked out. Take our lid off. Let this spin down. Alright, there we go. Coated circuit board. For a double sided circuit board, what you would do now is you'd take this off, turn it around and coat it again. But since this is a single sided blank, um, I'm only going to coat the one side. So yeah, next thing, uh, loosen this bolt or the, the nut on the bolt, take this off, put it in a dark room for about a day or two for this to dry off. So the board we previously coated is in a dark cupboard and I'm waiting for it to dry off. But since I want to show what uh, this looks when it's done, here's one I prepared earlier. And this is just a cut off from the same uh, format and you can see the line where I marked um, center. And you can see this is perfectly dry. It's a very, very hard film type material. Um, it's very nice. And this will resist etching far better than the flimsy tonery stuff that you can just rub off with your finger. This you'll not get off um, this surface by uh, rubbing it or something. You would really have to scratch it off. It's already, without even being exposed, it's very, very nice. So what you can do with this is you print yourself a mask on transparent plastic film and this um, film that you can use with a, with an inkjet printer but I do a laser and what you do then is you put it on there like this and you'd expose it to UV light for a couple of minutes in my case with the with the film I'm using and uh, photo resist I'm using it's four minutes but this will vary depending on the photoresist brand and the film that you use and how thick this uh, is and everything. And after we exposed it, you will put it into a sodium carbonate bath. And then everything that is not that has not been exposed to the UV light will dissolve in the carbonate solution. And then you can etch it. So this is why I'm going to stop this video and in the next video we're going to look at how this um, is exposed, the sort of device I built for UV exposure of these boards and then there will probably be a third episode where we're going to look at the actual etching process and some boards I made with this process. So I'll see you on the next one.